So the main takeaway is that the geopolitical landscape is changing, and it's uh, changing very dramatically. There's a lot of competition taking place around the world for resources, which has traditionally been problematic in terms of potentially creating conflict. So uh, the battle lines are being drawn uh, between the U.S., China, Russia, in terms of securing the metal supplies that are going to be needed for the energy transition. And I think uh, you've seen it in terms of how Canada and the U.S. have set up this joint uh, group to uh, address critical minerals. Um, you've seen Canada excluding China from the critical minerals investing in Canada. You've seen China ban exports of graphite. And in Africa, where China has traditionally been the main investor, now you got Russia in there through the Wagner Group. And now the U.S. is realizing that this is going to be problematic. So um, it's going to be a competition for resources. And the bottom line is that resources are going to become scarcer and higher priced over time. There was already a deficit of the metals needed for the energy transition, regardless of the geopolitics. The geopolitics just makes it all that much more profound. Well, as I said at the conclusion of my speech, I think we have an image problem. We have a PR problem. The mining industry is seen in the eyes of many as a dirty industry, when in fact it isn't. Mining done at the industrial scale by responsible mining companies is very, a very clean business. And it gets conflated with the actions of illegal miners or informal miners around the world. And the result is you have a lot of the institutional money around the world that almost refuses to invest in mining because it's not ESG. <laughs> and it's just simply not true. But, and I think it's really an image problem and it's a PR problem.